The northwest side community of Avondale is a diverse neighborhood with an industrial history. Located near the Kennedy Expressway and the Chicago River, it has significant Polish, Latino, Eastern European, and Asian populations. And like many parts of Chicago, residents and community leaders are concerned gentrification might displace longtime neighbors. Brandis Friedman spent the day reporting from Avondale as part of our In Your Neighborhood series, and she joins us live now. Brandis. In Paris, you're right, gentrification is a concern uh, for some of the neighbors here in Avondale, as is a lack of green space. Now, we found a bit of it. This is a mural garden at Addison and Avondale, one of a few public spaces here. And in a bit, we'll get into how some residents are working to address uh, that shortage. But first, a little bit of background. Avondale, as you said, has lost a bit of population, though, over the years, down nearly 3% since 2010 and 11.5% since 2000. Now, this is a lower middle income community with a median income at $66,000. Used to be largely Polish, but today it's still 34% white and 56% Hispanic. Longtime resident and Avondale Neighborhood Association officer Zobi Soto says this community used to be known as the neighborhood that built Chicago. In fact, she learned a fun fact about the people who owned her home before she moved in, which was 28 years ago. They've come back to visit, and I've since learned that the, the gentleman helped build uh, Sears Tower. He was one of the, and so a lot of people that lived here back in the day did a lot of that work. They were construction workers, they were cops, they were um, in, you know, in, in, in labor, right? They were in, working in labor. Now, Soto says, though, she's seen the neighborhood change racially, but also socioeconomically, to the point that she's concerned that new condo buildings will lead to gentrification, when she'd like to see more affordable housing in the community. And you might have noticed that she's also wearing a Chicago Public Library t-shirt. She's a big proponent of the Chicago Public Library system, but says Avondale never received the public library it was promised years ago. That's one of the reasons she says it is important for neighbors to partner with the Chicago Metropolitan Planning or Agency for Planning or CMAP to develop a neighborhood plan. They have a voice and a plan. So when developers come in, we could take a look at those those plans and say, does that fit with the voice of the community and what we wanted to see for our future, right? Instead of just letting it happen to us and doing it one by one, right? Or it's a battle of fighting developers that come in and just want to do whatever they want and having Alderman just, you know, sign off on it. Now, earlier we mentioned uh, green space or lack of it. Now, back when this section of the Kennedy was built, it bisected the neighborhood, leaving residents with a, a clear east-west division. And it also cut into the park space here. One organization, the Avondale Gardening Alliance, operates a neighborhood space lot that coincidentally backs up to this small park and has a perfect view of the interstate expressway. The alliance, though, also points to the work that it does to make urban agriculture accessible. So this space is called the Mindful Living Garden, full of flowers, but also food that goes to the Avondale Mutual Aid Society and the local Love Fridge. Organizers here report since the start of the pandemic, interest in this kind of gardening has skyrocketed. We've actually had a number of, of folks in the neighborhood uh, and some of our members really step up in amazing ways to address the financial and food insecurity that's, you know, that's really raised. And the interest in urban agriculture, we, in this time two years ago in 2019 when we were doing our largest event, um, our online community was um, about 350 people. Two years later, now we're over 1,500. Now, in fact, one of the Alliance members converted her wedding florist business into a plants business because, as you know, many people did adopt pandemic plants over this last year and a half. Now, with the ups and the downs of this pandemic, bars and restaurants across the city uh, have also had to pivot multiple times in order to keep up with the changing guidance and the changing policy and recommendations. One bar, Sleeping Village on Belmont, is one of several that are making it a policy that customers who enter must be masked and show proof of vaccination. They started this policy several months ago, but then when cases fell back then, when cases were down earlier in the summer, but they backed off of it. Lately, it's back in place. As a business owner, I feel a lot more confident in my ability to keep a vaccinated person safe in our space versus somebody 
coming through the door that's unvaccinated. The vast majority of the feedback we've gotten from our customers has been very, very positive. Uh, you know, the thing we're hearing more often than not is that, you know, people feel a lot more safe in a space that is requiring proof of vaccination. And co-owner Billy Helmkamp uh, says that while they have only had to turn away about a handful of people for lack of proof of vaccination, most of the customers have been understanding since they know we've been in this pandemic again for almost 18 months. Now, Paris, coming up later on, we'll hear from one of several older people who represents Avondale. Uh, we'll also talk more about that neighborhood plan that I mentioned earlier. But for now, Paris, we'll send it back to you. Green patch of land right by the highway there. All right, Brandis, thanks so much, and we'll look forward to that.